Hey, I'm Randy and I'm the Cheap Audio Man. Here at the Cheap Audio Man, we don't feel like hi-fi equipment, vintage receivers, should sometimes cost more than anything because I pulled this one out of the trash. So sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's talk about my trash receiver. Today's sponsors, Ark and Andy's three prong to two prong switches, plug in things. When you want to trick a grounded piece of electronics to think it's grounded, but it's really not grounded, grab one of these and then maybe not burn your house down. But be careful because you could burn your house down. Okay. The Pioneer QX747. So a little background story. All right. My hot water heater broke. And I had to change, well, not, not me personally, I had to pay someone to come and change out my one of my hot water heaters. Anyway, the garage was a bit messy. So I loaded up the car with a bunch of trash and drove it down to my bulk trash facility to drop it off. They have an electronics bin that sometimes I, you know, throw a printer in there or something else. But there's audio equipment in there, almost always. And, you know, like TV, flat screen TVs, big console, any old electronics goes there. Well, I generally peruse the electronics trash. This time, when I looked down, I saw some silver and I saw some wood. And then when I moved it, it was quite heavy. When I moved it, it said Pioneer. And that was all I needed to see because there's been uh, other very popular YouTubers like Andrew Robinson who had a Pioneer receiver restored. Anyway, I grabbed it, picked it up, and apparently I didn't know that you can't just take garbage from the dump and put it in your car and then take it because I guess when you put it in the electronics bin, it becomes a property of uh, Fort Worth. Anyway, they were very nice because I was very apologetic. I didn't know you couldn't take the trash trash and they were very nice they let me take it so i'm like looking it up it's a qx747 which is a quadraphonic so it's a four channel receiver right i didn't know that i didn't know that was a thing i didn't know quadraphonic or recordings even existed i, I found out though anyway point being is this was garbage and I brought it home and I plugged it in and probably shouldn't have done it, but I turned it on and it lit up and I hooked up some speakers and it was not good at first. Very uh, staticky, sparkly, lots of sparkles. And the left channel didn't work out of the front two channels. And it was literally a rat's nest in there. I mean, leaves, stuff, pretty bad. So I got some contact cleaner, cleaned up some of the pots, sprayed out the debris and uh, there's a, a dead bug inside the glass now this is my first my first take at it first pass at cleaning this up but it was pretty bad it was all rusty on front a little bit of clr took it took the rust right off point being is it actually sounds awesome sounds fantastic there's some capacitors that probably need to be changed out which i'm going to do i, I got them on order and i'm going to do it myself uh probably blow up the whole house anyway this was free People are throwing stuff away for free. Vintage hi-fi gear is expensive. When Andrew Robinson did his review on the Pioneer, I got very excited. So I went out and I checked around. Like Marantz, Pioneer stuff is like $300, $350. The only reasonable stuff that's still out there is some realistic uh, stuff, you know, from Radio Shack. And that's what I had growing up. That was my first real receiver. That's what, that's why I'm making this video today. Because this brought me back to my roots, my hi-fi roots. When I was a kid, I grew up on a farm, working farm, not like a hobby farm that we live and we have a couple of goats or pigs or whatever, 20 acres of corn. No, a real farm. I grew up on a farm in Nebraska, rural America. And everybody at that time, every town at that time, had a appliance store. Fridges, washers, dryers, and things like that. 
Well, they all had a small hi-fi section. Even in the tiny little town that I grew up in, there's two, and they both had hi-fi equipment. And I remember just walking around and being fascinated by the speakers. When I was seven, generally in my family, the, the, a seven-year-old is given a, a firearm on their, on their birthday. Actually, it's not a firearm, it's a BB gun. Well, in lieu of a BB gun, I wanted a Walkman, a Sony Walkman. And we didn't, I didn't get a Sony Walkman, I got like the knockoff. But I was obsessed with audio and hi-fi gear since I can remember. And I don't know quite why, I just always was. I think it has something to do with, Mar with Marty McFly and Back to the Future holding on to the back of trucks. And see, that was the problem. I wanted to be Marty McFly, but the town I grew up in, was so rural we didn't have any paved streets so you can't really grab onto you can grab onto a pickup truck on a skateboard on gravel streets but it's not going to last very long it's probably going to end up someone's going to end up with an injury i still wanted to be marty mcfly i wanted to put my my headphones in on over my ears and go rock and roll so i saved my money and i was able to purchase a used realistic receiver from one of those appliance stores and I think the guy finally just took pity on me because I kept I would always go in there and just just look at everything and touch everything and everything so I got my realistic receiver I also got a pair of used Kenwood tower speakers that were a three-way tower speaker and it had a passive radiator and I didn't know what a passive radiator was back then but it had one and I thought it was a, a dual woofer speaker but anyway, it looked cool, right? So I had my realistic receiver, I had my, my Kenwoods, and then I had an Emerson CD player from Walmart back when Walmart actually sold hi-fi equipment. And that's my first system, and I was like 10 at that time, maybe 11. And I, I spent all my money on hi-fi gear. So I totally get vintage gear and why it's popular because folks like me, I'm 45, this is actually, I think, 45, 46, or 47 years old, maybe between 73 to 76, I get why people like it. Because this reminds me of my childhood. This reminds me of playing records at my house or my friend's house. Is this as good or major as well as Class D or other amplifiers these days? Probably not, because, now granted, this is a trash receiver. But even when I'm not playing anything out of it, I can I can hear a, some some I can hear the I can hear the soul of the pioneer trying to escape the speakers, and that's fine. I don't care because it looks really cool. It's got these. Well, I guess it's not playing right now. It's it's got these things, these lights that light up and they dance with the music, and I sure do like that because it reminds me of when I was a kid again, dancing with the music. Anyway, I'm tickled pink with my trash receiver. I can't believe it worked. I can't believe it makes music now. And I can't believe I kind of cleaned it up enough to the point where it doesn't look like actual garbage anymore. So this video isn't really reviewing anything except for the Pioneer. The Pioneer is awesome. It's got t controls. You can dial in four speakers at the same time. So it's kind of like the first, I don't know if it's the first, kind of like surround sound back in the day before they had anything like that. They had quadraphonic recordings, I guess. It lasted all of like about two or three years. So it was an, an unmitigated success failure. But you can dial in four speakers at the same time. So in essence, it's kind of like running uh, all channel stereo on your surround receiver, except you can dial it in. And this one has dancing lights and it looks like it was from uh, NORAD in the 1950s. So I would like to hear from you all. In the comments, talk about what was your first system? What got you into hi-fi and why are you still into hi-fi? The funny thing is I hooked up a Bluetooth receiver. Actually, it's an IEMA T8. It'll be linked in the description. So with the Pioneer, just kidding, you can't get the Pioneer. I think you can get it on eBay, but it's ridiculously expensive. Not like my trash receiver, because it was free. So I'm listening to Bluetooth through this thing and it's like it, it's like it knew. Because like Def Leppard came on, Black Sabbath, a whole bunch of 80s songs. And I guess I've been listening to some 80s, but it's like the audio gods knew what to play through my trash receiver. So I'll probably be doing more videos on the Pioneer QX747. It's actually got a bigger brother, the QX, 
949, which my buddy Digital Dan has. Some of my other big time supporters for the channel, like Brock, Steve, Z, you know who you are, they're into Vengeance Audio stuff too. There's something about the sound. And I don't necessarily know if it's the sound or what. I just, I hooked up the Sony SSCS5s to it just because that's what I had handy. I found myself just listening to music and enjoying it and not, I, I couldn't stop. Like I kept looking at my watch. I'm like, I, I need to go to bed. I need to go to bed. But I just wanted to listen to one more song. Call it nostalgia. Call it a novelty. I don't know. What I do know is I was enjoying the music and if... <laughs> Signal to noise ratio is 60 dB or whatever horrible thing it is. I was loving it. So if you have a chance, look around, see if you can find a vintage receiver. I know it's harder now than it was before. Before they were throwing these things out by the truckload. You go into any Goodwill or thrift store and pick one up for 10 or 15 bucks. Now it's more difficult because apparently people like us have started to catch on that this is pretty cool listening to music through these things again. Regardless of how much I try to expand my musical taste, my true love is always going to be the late 80s and the 90s through 2000s. Those are the years that I loved and fell in love with music. I mean, I listened to music, but it was that time that music imprinted me so heavily. And while this predates that, this is the type of equipment I would have been listening to back then because I couldn't afford anything else. So tell me about your experience, your first system, your first set of real speakers, your first real receiver, whatever it is. Let's chit chat about it in the comments and always keep your eyes open because you never know what kind of gem you'll find when your hot water heater blows up and you're angry and you have to take a whole bunch of trash to the bulk trash facility and you're really mad, but then something happens that's so nice. So even in the face of adversity, something awesome can happen. And for me, it was the Pioneer QX747. So if you want to support the channel and you like what we're doing, subscribe. Hit the like button. Uh, you can also sign up for Patreon, patreon.com slash cheap audio man. Every Sunday night, we have patron-only Zooms where we talk about vintage audio gear, current audio gear, and mountain biking, apparently. You can also use my links. This is obviously not going to be linked. I'll link the IEMA T8, though. That's what I was using for a Bluetooth receiver. You can also sign up for Amazon Music. If you sign up now, you get three months of Disney Plus for free. So don't binge watch anything, I guess, if you get Amazon, though, and you get three months of Disney Plus. You're probably going to binge watch something on Disney Plus. Don't binge watch anything. Binge listen through your very own trash receiver and fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man.